G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for yet another AFL trade period update. You guys seem to be responding to these at the moment. I Frankly, I enjoy making them. They're not too hard to make. So I thought I'd give a little bit of an update on uh, some recent things happening today. I've just recently broke the news some 48 hours after I was lamenting how the Eagles had pretty much gotten themselves into a pickle without being able to spend any money on any recruits. They have come out and made me look very, very silly for making those points because it appears that Sam petrovsky seaton has requested a trade from Carlton to join join the Eagles during this trade period. Now, while I say it makes me look silly, it's not because I think Petrovsky Seaton's this massive fish or a huge, you know, coop for the Eagles. I did kind of say that I thought the Eagles had sort of backed themselves into a corner a little bit with the list management moves. From what I'd heard, we had no money to even sign the players that we had, let alone recruit anyone else. But evidently that may not actually be the case if we seem to be in Sam Petrovsky Seaton's ear. Now, to be fair, obviously it's early days in negotiations. He's simply just nominated West Coast as his destination of choice. So there's no actual suggestion that we've definitely necessarily courted him before that he's requested this trade to West Coast. However, it doesn't seem to happen so often that a player would nominate a club before actually having a chat with that club. So it's a pleasant surprise because from what I had gathered about the Eagles contract decisions was all being held up because we didn't have enough money. But on the positive side, you'd have to say they've probably made all their forecasting and financial decisions on the basis that they may be adding, you know, Sam Petrevsky's seat into the list for next season. What do I think about the trade? Well, I don't know if I have a really strong opinion on Petrevsky's seat and as such as a player, but he was a top five pick drafted back in 2016 from memory from Halls Creek originally. The Eagles didn't have a high draft pick that year, so I didn't really research him. I just sort of understood generally that he was a good player. From what I can gather, he's a small, lightly built inside mid with really, really good skills. Very classy user of the footy, which I think makes him suit West Coast brand. Sounds like he couldn't quite hold down a permanent midfield spot at Carlton. They moved him back and he wasn't able to capture his best form. From what I've read, he seems a little bit frustrated with the fact that he was pushed to the back line but at the end of the day he also probably didn't perform well enough when he had midfield opportunities that's me guessing that's just me looking at it on a surface level there's no doubt he's got AFL talent in terms of the way he uses the ball. He seems to move pretty well as well. He seems to be a very skillful player. But I guess the question mark on him is if you're a inside mid at heart and that's the way you play, he's a little bit small. And I don't know if he's sort of explosive or quick enough to be able to get away with that, doing that regularly at AFL level. He's out of contract. I don't think it's going to break the bank for the Eagles to get him over to the West. I'm not too sure exactly what he would cost. I've been reading Carlton fans have suggested, you know, a second round or I think someone even suggested Liam Duggan but you know you get that around the trade period that's what happens I suggested Jared Brander for us is out of contract and likely gonna cost absolutely nothing in a trade and I think Petrovsky Seaton's not too far off that he's probably definitely shown more at AFL level but at the end of the day he's 23 and was only in and out of Carlton's side and Carlton weren't too crash hot this year am I happy about the deal you know what I I'm actually pretty positive on it when you Look at the way the Eagles list is shaped at the moment. Obviously, there's a bit of a need to sort of regenerate the, the future generation between guys like Kennedy and Hearn and Shepard and Redden likely to retire in the next couple of years. I like to think Shuey's going to keep going as well. But there's some players in it right in the twilight of their career. So we need to be looking at ways we can sort of bridge the gap before we have to go into a total rebuild. A good way of doing that that I support is looking at those guys who are in their early mid-20s at other clubs who maybe want to come play for the Eagles and maybe looking at whether they've been slightly underappreciated or, you know, not quite developed in the right way and that way you can extract value out of them without spending heaps in a trade. So by that logic, I think adding a 23-year-old midfielder that's probably going to be on the cusp of the 22 at first with potential to sort of move into a best 22 position in the next 12 to 24 months, I think that's actually a really positive and logical move for the Eagles. The Eagles can't move heaven and earth to acquire some elite talent this offseason. They have to keep their first pick because they've traded away so many first rounders over the last four years. And the salary cap is very, very tight. So the only other way you can really improve your list is going after players like a Petrovsky Seaton, who may be a little bit undervalued or haven't quite hit their potential and you can back yourself in to try and extract that potential. So I am pretty positive on the move. I uh, hope it works out. And uh, more than anything, I think I'm just pleasantly surprised that we're not as crippled with salary cap issues as I had been informed. Hopefully this explains, you know, why Josh Rotham's still without a deal. While we seem to have, you know, a ton of uncontracted players, they obviously have to see the outcome of a deal like this with Carlton. Hopefully not before we decide whether we can keep a Josh Rotham, but how much we can just pay him. What does Petrovsky Seaton 
likely at a cost in a trade. Well, I think Carlton fans will want a second rounder and the Eagles fans will say a fourth rounder and perhaps it'll be somewhere in between. Historically speaking, I've been critical on how easygoing the Eagles are at the trade table, so I wouldn't be surprised if pick 36 does make its way to Carlton, but that's probably a little bit more than I would be offering. But typically, in a deal like this, neither team is going to be happy with what happens in the trade, so maybe I'm wrong, maybe he is worth pick 36. Part of the reaction to this deal has been how it's going to affect Carlton's ability to recruit in Adam Chera, and obviously we still don't really know where he's going. I did suggest in my last video, it's more likely Melbourne, but frankly, obviously Carlton is still a major contender for that. AFL Trade Radio on their Instagram has put up a fairly reasonable trade suggestion I would suggest. So they say a three-way deal is quite possibly on the cards here, not with information. I think they're just hypothesizing, but Carlton, West Coast, and Fremantle could put their heads together to get the following deal done. Carlton would gain Adam Chera and pick 65 and give away pick six and send Petrovsky Seaton. The Eagles would receive SPS, as I'm going to allude to him in the future, and pick 36 and 65 leave the club. That leaves Fremantle with pick six and 36 for Adam Chera. And I know Fremantle fans will probably bristle at that because they have received some very good deals for the players that have left their club in the past. But I do think Adam Chera, well, he's certainly less heralded than a Lockie Neal was at the time. He's also out of contract as well. So I think that is pretty realistic and will be interesting to see how these deals go down. As always, I am an Eagles fan. I'll put that disclaimer out there. So it's hard not to be a little bit biased, but just with the way that the Eagles really need to rejuvenate their list with some good draft picks, that's why I'm feeling feeling a little bit stingy on what pick we give up for SPS. But overall, positively looking at this deal and hoping it goes through. It may not be groundbreaking for the Eagles next year, but you know, in 24 to 36 months, our list might be in a little bit better shape because we've invested in a 23-year-old midfielder rather than just another 18-year-old kid in the second or third round. And it's good to see the Eagles are sort of looking at this transition period. Obviously, we've invested in a couple of early 20s to mid-20s guys over the last couple of years. We took Langdon and Witherden last year and hopefully getting Petrovsky Seaton this year. They're not well beaters, but they do kind of help bridge a bit of a list gap for the Eagles. In other trade news, in what is probably arguably a far bigger story, to be honest, than the Eagles potentially getting Petrovsky Seaton, is that Jordan Dawson, despite what was reported earlier this week with him having a medical at Port Adelaide, has officially requested a trade to Adelaide. This is a great move for Adelaide. I'm sure Port are bitterly disappointed. They said they had extreme interest in Dawson. He's a quality player and they're right in contention. He would have been a fantastic pickup for them. I'd imagine there's a few factors going against Port here. They might not be able to offer the same salaries Adelaide. I imagine they're a bit closer to their cap. And in addition to that, I believe Dawson grew up as a Crows fan. So that may or may not have been a factor. Players don't always go back to the team that they barrack for as a kid. I think Elliot Yo was a big Dockers fan, if I'm not mistaken. But it's a really, really good pickup for Adelaide. And I just really feel I have the faith in their development. In the past, they've overcome, you know, losing players. And I feel like they're just going to rebuild really quickly. And I think Dawson is a key part of that. I'll be interested to see what they give up for him. They've got, I think, pick six and and 23 or pick five and 23 or something. Pick five or six is a bit too steep for a player like Dawson. He's a very good player, but I'd imagine it's going to be 23 and potentially a future second. I'd imagine a future first is still probably a little bit steep, but he's a quality player. So it'd be interesting to see what Adelaide stump up for him. Anyway, guys, that is my latest trade update with uh, a very Eagles biased view. As always, let me know in the comments what you think about, uh, you know, the SPS deal. What do you think he'll eventually go for? How do you think this affects the Adam Chera deal? And of course, Jordan Dawson to Adelaide. What will be the eventual asking price for a player like him? Appreciate all the support lately, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.